back for episode 7. Today we're going to install a few items on the Benelli TNT 135. A couple of items that I'm going to install. Some bar ends to protect the clutch levers. These were ordered from AliExpress. I'll put the link down below. And of course they're, they're copying Rizoma, which is a stellar upscale brand for mostly Italian bikes but other bikes as well uh, regarding uh, items that you can get to trim out your bike. Packaging on this is ridiculous and I would argue that Rizoma has spent more on the packaging of their items than this entire item costs so they're very expensive to buy the real deal so yes they're, uh, it's a knockoff on the brand. We're going to install some clutch and brake levers, and these are pretty slick. Uh, yeah, they're, they add to the green tones on the bike, but they also fold up in the event of an off so that uh, they don't snap off, which is quite nice. They're adjustable as well, and we'll see how that goes on the installation. And lastly, I'm kind of excited about this one. I have a Puig windscreen. This is the street screen, naked screen, and uh, it's in green. So let's get to it. A couple of footnotes here. A shout out to Cisco Julian, also known as Cisco San Jose. I'll leave a link to his channel down below in the description. He offered some great advice on the comments of my first uh, TNT video. And after further research, he's a member on their Facebook page. That's off to you, my friend. Thank you so much for commenting and stopping by and watching. Also, a second shout out to Greg Faff. I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name right. On the Speedo DRD H1. Uh, this is a $70 device you can buy on Amazon that corrects your speed to the correct amount versus what it's showing. And I'm probably going to purchase that and do a video on the install on that and see how that goes. So thank you so much, Greg. Appreciate that as well. I'll leave a link to his YouTube channel down below as well. Big shout out to those two gentlemen. Lastly, I get a lot of friends uh, that say, hey, does does the TNT wheelie, does it uh, do stoppies and things like that? This channel is about safe riding. Um, yes, I've done all those things in my life. I'm not going to candy coat it and lie. Uh, been doing that for a long, long time on many, many different bikes, but I'm not going to promote it on this channel. I used to be a motorcycle safety foundation instructor and kind of from that point forward in my life I chose to be an advocate of safe riding to keep people alive so I'm not going to clown around. Yes you get a heck of a lot more subs and views if you're doing stunts and crazy things on your bike that are hair raising but uh, I'm not going to promote that and I hope you respect that. Thank you. First we're going to install a ram ball mount. Just remove one of these uh, handlebar bolts. And when you buy a ram ball, it comes with different size screws. Find the one that fits your bike. This one happens to work for mine. Just slip it in and pop her back on. Good to go. Now in this case, I'm going to be using it for my cell phone to operate the GoPro. I can also use it for my navigation. You just buy one of these clamps. I'll link them down to the description as well. And here you have infinite adjustment to uh, park your phone any way you want. So uh, kind of a slick setup. Quick, easy job right there. Next, I remove the mirror to get it out of the field of view here. and We're going to remove the clutch leveler here. You can see it has roughly about oh, a little less than a half inch of uh, travel. That's kind of the right spot for it. Everybody's different on how they like their clutch adjusted, but my recommendation is try to keep it right around a half inch of travel before you can start to feel resistance. We pull this rubber boot back here, keeps it uh, protected, and pull it back. And you loosen the tensioner adjustment right here, and we get some back it out. to get some slack in there and then run it all the way in to give you the most adjust uh, most travel in the cable okay next we're going to remove the uh, pivoting screw this is an Asian bike so most of the uh, if not all the bolts should be metric on on this bike 
In this case, it's a 10 millimeter that uh, bolt on the bottom that holds the uh, pivoting screw for the clutch lever. We'll back that out gently. After that screw is removed, you can gently just pull it right out and you'll see there's a slot where you can uh, remove the uh, cable from the handle. Please take note that there's a uh, nylon surrounding on the uh, barrel end of the uh, cable, so don't lose that. Okay, if you take a look at the uh, underside of the new clutch, you can see that that's where your barrel is going to go and the cable slips in there and then rocks forward up into the front like so just like the stock one came out uh, we're gonna place some grease on both sides of this in my particular case I just happen to have a top tub of uh, Yamalu race, race grease and uh, we're gonna put some on uh, both sides and kind of squeeze some down into the metal and that'll keep it nice and uh, lubricated let's install that barrel cable should also mention that uh, now would be a good time while you're digging into this to lube your cables, your clutch cable. So uh, you might want to shoot it with, a, which I did, a shot of, uh, in this case, Bell Ray is what I use, but any, any cable lube will do, that, that's just fine. Okay, I got the bolt started underneath, let's cinch her up. Feels pretty good. And all that's left is to adjust our cable. Okay, let's uh, adjust the cable. Get it back to about a half inch. Feeling pretty good. And you can see with the adjustment on the clutch now, it's uh, quite slick. It gives you, uh, note the difference between uh, the space between the actual lever and the uh, grip. You get, ooh, maybe three quarters of an inch uh, throw there. Pretty slick. I like it. And in the event of an off and you tip over, this will kick up so that it doesn't snap off and leave you stranded on the road somewhere, unable to shift. So I like that idea. Nice. Okay, next we're going to place the bar end, and I want to take a moment to talk about that for just a second. These bar ends are actually uh, weights, and they help reduce the vibration in the handlebars you feel from the engine. A lot of people, a lot of aftermarket bar end mirrors and things of that nature don't really have any weights inside there, so as a result, even though they feel they upgraded their bike with mirrors or something cool, only to find out that they got more vibration as a result. So. Let's remove these. You can see they're quite heavy. And if you take a look, this is actually a weight in itself that we're going to slip right in there. I forgot to mention the size hex head was an HW5 on that one. I hope you can see it. Now we need to remove this uh, bar end bolt. And they come out that easy.
Per usual, my videos seem to run a little long, so I'm already 10 minutes deep into it and I didn't accomplish everything that I wanted to, so let's go over what we did accomplish. We installed the RAM ball on the gooseneck, was able to make sure that I have the ability to host my camera, navigation, whatever uh, I wish to mount up there, so camera, whatever. So that's kind of kind of cool. Got the levers installed and adjusted properly and lubed, and we got the uh, bar ends installed. My thoughts on the levers and the bar ends. The levers are pretty good, but there's a little bit of slop in them, so I need to buy some nylon uh, washers to put on the top and bottom of each lever to take the slack out of it. A little too much throw in there for my taste. So they're a generic lever, not specifically designed for this bike, so it's not uncommon to run into this. So the levers are kind of a one thumb up, one thumb down, uh, just inexpensive stuff that I was able to make work. The bar ends, straight up, thumbs down. They were a nightmare to get on. Uh, they weren't designed for this bike, and I had to do a lot of heavy modding of the plugs that uh, expand and hold the bar ends on. We were able to get it to work, but uh, what should have been a 10, 15 minute job turned into an hour, hour and a half. So, story of my life when I'm working on bikes. A Couple of very cool things I wanna point out. Uh, see this plaque up here, beware of the Kraken. Subscriber and fan of the channel sent that to me and I'm just blown away. I didn't think anybody would ever do something like that for me, so thank you very much and it means a lot to me. Proudly hanging on my wall and uh, enjoyed for many years to come. Thank you so much. A couple of items I didn't really uh, cover in the first video of the Benelli TNT 135, the warranty. It's 12 months, 12,000 miles. There's a few good dealers around that are quite serious about the Benelli name. The dealer I purchased mine from is Carnes Performance up in Pennsylvania. They were straight up uh, good, good people to deal with. There was no clowning around with the uh, dock fees, setup, freight, handling fees, things of that nature that usually at most dealers add $1,000 onto the price tag. They were just straight up and good people to work with. I highly recommend them. I'll leave a link to them as well in the bottom. I didn't discuss the colors as well. I'll throw up some pictures on the screen for 2020, what colors are available for the TNT 135. I will say in some dealers' inventories, I'm already seeing 2021 so I don't know if they change their colors for two, the, the next year coming up, but we shall see on that. Coming up next on Kraken's Garage and Adventures, we're gonna do a sequel to this very video and the install of the uh, fly screen that I purchased for it. I'm looking forward to that. It's uh, gonna look really sharp on that bike, at least I think so, and we'll see how it goes from there. Another uh, minor item I wanted to point out was that I forgot on my list of pros is the bike is 100% LED lights, front to back. Turn signals, headlight, brake light, it's all LED. So good stuff there. A con, the headlight, and I need to get some pictures of that uh, when I get time. The low beam is fine. The high beam is a very narrow pencil beam. So it's terrible on the high beams. Yay, another ghost. This is the ghost of Bullet. He's here to ask you to... <laughs> He's here to ask you to like, subscribe. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. 